Recording 53, and we're in a Honda CRV. Call that I like very much. I like it very, very much. I didn't think I would. The world is full of surprises. <laughs> When I first started making video reviews for Honest John as a fresh-faced 35-year-old whippersnapper, we did a review on the Honda CRV, last CRV. But if you look for that video now, you won't find it. I deleted it. It was a disaster. At the start of the shoot, I reversed into somebody's driveway wall so hard that part of it collapsed. And that's why if you'd watched the video, you might have noticed that there were no rear shots of the car. Not ones that we took anyway. But worse, I formulated this introduction in which I forgot the CRV's name. The idea being that there are so many of these crossover type things that I couldn't distinguish Hondas from the rest of them. Sadly, the joke didn't work. It wasn't funny and it was confusing. It just looked like I'd had a bout of amnesia and I couldn't remember three letters. And there were other guys throughout the video that were also confusing and didn't work to the extent that the whole video became our own little YouTube rewind didn't work nobody liked it which is a shame because the car itself was good and what was really good about the CRV was its combination of space and comfort and yeah it was a bit expensive and it was a bit very ugly and it had a baffling infotainment system but generally it was excellent solid family transport well all that still applies for this new one the fifth one if you're counting it's still massive, it's still soft, it still has an entertainment system that makes you jab your finger at it and swear every other mile. And it's still a bit of a pig to look at, especially from the back, in my opinion. And that's even without having crashed it into some poor bloke's wall. What I'm saying is that there hasn't been a fundamental character shift, it's just a big old improvement on what went before. But actually, far from making it just a slightly better sort of also ran, the improvements are so all-encompassing that the CRV has shifted from being a big lump of average to being one of the best family crossovers that money can buy. And a big part of that is, and I can't believe I'm actually about to say this, it's the hybrid system. And that's a massive surprise. Because if you watch our stuff regularly, you'll know that I put hybrids in the same category as the average Twitter user puts reason, avoid at all costs. But lately, that's been shifting. Things are getting much, much better. The new Toyota Corolla 2 liter hybrid, for example, is excellent. It's the very first hybrid that I would actually recommend to somebody enthusiastically with very few caveats. So what's so good about this one then? The most impressive thing about this hybrid system is that it manages to hide its complexity in this big vacuum of refinement. It's very quiet and comfortable despite what's happening underneath you. There is an electric generator between the petrol engine and the electric motor that propels the wheels. And a lot of the time the petrol engine is charging that rather than driving the wheels directly even though it can drive the wheels directly. So while it can technically move like a conventional petrol engine car, most of the time the system is trying to get the electric motor to do the work and it'll do a mile or something using the battery alone which is something I feel obliged to say really rather than something that actually matters. But what really does matter is the gearbox. Unlike a lot of hybrid systems this doesn't have a CVT and instead it has a single fixed gear ratio which helps eradicate a lot of what is unpleasant about driving the average hybrid as in that horrible CVT whine while you're accelerating. Now you can make it sound horrible but whereas most CVT gearboxes give you that horrible whine sort of from mid-engine load onwards, this you really have to be pressing it to get it to make that awful noise. It does whine I suppose and it is actually pretty bad if you're really pressing on the throttle. But honestly, you'll just have to take my word for it. It is significantly quieter than a lot of other hybrids are with CVT gearboxes. Overall, it is one of the most refined hybrid systems you'll come across generally. And what's most impressive about this is the press and go simplicity of it all, despite how complicated it is. There's no shunt in the driveline when it's switching between the engine and the electric motor. And there's no spike in noise when the petrol engine kicks in. It's just dead calm. Of course, all this technology and space comes at a cost. For a hybrid CRV, it's not on 30 grand from the off rising to 37 and while that looks expensive if you compare it to the average crossover if you actually compare it to other petrol electric hybrid crossover SUV type things it's really reasonably priced it has a significantly cheaper entry point than the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle for example albeit this isn't a plug-in and it's even cheaper than the Mini Countryman hybrid again a plug-in but also that thing is tiny you don't even have to have a hybrid either you can save yourself a good few grand 
free specifically if you get a petrol one. Plus if you do that you'll also get a bigger boot because there's no batteries in the boot of the non-hybrid one. Albeit you won't need a bigger boot probably because even the hybrid has a massive one. You might need seven seats though which is an option with a CRV but again it's not an option you can have with a hybrid. No room for the extra seats because of the battery pack. And if you do decide to go non-hybrid for your CRV your only choice is a turbo petrol. You can have it with a manual gearbox or you can have it with an automatic although that automatic is a CVT which I'm told is one of the better ones but still eh. And finally both the hybrid and the petrol can be had with either front wheel or four wheel drive which is why this is a crossover and not just a big fat hatchback. So plenty of choice anyway and just to finish this consumer section that whole choice motif continues with the trim levels of which there are four. Same for the petrol and for the hybrid one. Now I won't go through them because obviously that's a lot and you don't want me just to be reading through equipment lists but I will say that the one that I would recommend is the second one, SE. The reason for that is it's just got a nice amount of kit, including sat-nav and dual zone climate control. And there's loads of safety stuff, which is part of the reason why this gets a five-star Euro NCAP rating. You know, usually with cars like this, as in a big Japanese crossover that's quite expensive, and also a hybrid. I'd be scratching around trying to muster up enthusiasm for it by talking about how much space it's gotten how cheap it is to run if you're a company car driver. I'd basically be trying to hide the reality of how depressing it is to drive and how I'm gonna forget about it the moment that I handed the keys back. But honestly, I really like this a surprising amount. Big and luxurious in the nicest possible way. And everything about it's just pleasant. Details like armrests that are big and squishy and that you can rest your elbows on at the same level, which is actually the sort of thing that a luxury car does. And even though I think Honda has overtaken Renault as the manufacturer with the worst infotainment system in car manufacturing, everything else about being in this car and using it is really nice. Proper luxury SUV ride quality, generally. Most of the wind and the tyre noise and the mechanical noise engineered out. When you're watching on video, you don't really get a sense of the difference in low speed refinement from one car to the next, but I'm telling you, this thing is so quiet. And it only really starts to get unpleasant when you really push the car hard, which you rarely will. Part of the reason for that is that it does feel quite quick. It's got good pickup. Or if not quick exactly, it feels responsive. If you're sort of moving at mid-speed 30 to 40, there is a bit of a gap after you put your foot down, but it still feels quick, and the pickup from standstill is really good. So it doesn't feel as big and clumsy as something that looks this big and clumsy possibly could. And it even drives surprisingly well. So at low speed, it does feel like it's moving around on its springs a lot, like a luxury SUV does. But if you do task it with a few corners and you're going a bit faster, you're doing that road test thing, it is nowhere near the big fat mess that you expect it to be. Now obviously it's not made for that at all, but it is quite nice to find out that it can handle itself a little bit. Sort of. It does a surprisingly passable job, even though you can tell that its expertise lies elsewhere. Well, his pals are here, and his wife. If I was after something sizable, flexible, bit unusual, pretty cheap to run, no nonsense, this would be really high up on my list. It's a giant leap over the outgoing car and it is better in most ways than pretty much everything else that's a similar size and price and type in my opinion. And that's partly because you can just tell that a lot of work has gone into making it that way. So a few examples, it's got noise cancelling software that runs through the speakers to make the whole cabin quieter. And the materials around the dashboard are tactile but it even uses wood trim and manages to do that without looking like a crappy old Rover somehow. And you can even pull a small caravan with it because it's got a 750kg towing limit. Look at it. How am I supposed to run this thing from that? And you will struggle to find any car that's not a van with this much interior storage. Suffice to say, you can get a large bottle in the door pocket and most likely a selection of gloves in the glove box. The best thing is this bin here, which is massive. Watch this, right? Plastic bag, cup, hat, mango, mayonnaise, that's real road testing. And so to conclude, this in my opinion is surprisingly one of the best crossovers you can buy. 
and certainly the best hybrid one. But even without the hybrid bits, it's just a very, very good family car. Highly recommended. Thanks for watching. Please watch our other stuff. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so and click like and let us know what you think of the car or anything else below. We love reading your comments. See you next week. We're doing a mental Lamborghini. Bye. Butternut squash, beef. Apparently if you throw a kilogram of beef brisket onto a half empty coffee cup, <laughs> it'll splash alcohol over here. This month, we are looking at the Flex man, the cut. This month, we're looking at the Honda CVR. What? Damn it! This month we're looking at the Honda CV... No, it's v VCR, isn't it? This month we're looking at the Honda CRV. Another 4x4 looking crossover. So how many trunk slash boots can we fit into this trunk sla slash boot? The game show where we tell you what it's all a boot. And that's what it's all a boot.